Hello and welcome into the North Sidebound YouTube channel. My name is Greg Huss and today I am kicking off a series of videos uh, talking about prospect profiles. Today we're leading off with the Chicago Cubs top prospect and that is Pete Crow Armstrong. In these videos, I'm going to roll out several of these things, but in this initial video and all of the videos to follow, I'm going to be digging into these players a little bit more in depth than what you'll see in a, in a quick turnaround video. I'm not sure how long these are going to go. We'll see. But uh, I'm going to dig into each player with five steps here. My initial step is to kind of give an overview of what their 2023 season looked like at a glance. I'm going to be sharing a, a player uh, profile card that I've made, uh, and that'll be up throughout the entirety of the video, kind of digging into their 2023 season. And that will be immediately followed by digging into strengths, weaknesses, potential outcomes, and timeline for each of these individual players. Like I said, today we are kicking things off with Pete Crow Armstrong. He is... According to me and most publications out there, the number one ranked player in the Cubs organization. As you can see here, he had a really, really strong 2023 campaign. Um, he made his way all the way up to Chicago. The uh, 2023 standard stats that you'll see here uh, do not include his major league uh, outputs. Uh, that is just minor league standard stats, as are the advanced stats and the batted ball stats that we have here. Um, and then you can kind of see his stats at the bottom of the page by level. Uh, Peeker Armstrong, for being a glove first center fielder, put together a really strong offensive performance this year, posting 20 home runs, 37 stolen bases. He had an OPS uh, at 876, which is really strong in 500 plate appearances. He started off the year, obviously, in double eights in a C and put together a slash line that was close to a 900 OPS. Uh, was striking out a little bit more than the league average rate down in uh, down in Tennessee, um, and also walking at about a nine percent clip. So uh, really, the the numbers in Double A Tennessee were terrific. He got that bump up to Triple A Iowa to kind of kind of end the year. It's kind of the last couple months of the year, and still looked really really strong in the plates. Uh, we'll dig into some of the, some of his weaknesses, obviously, but um, according to these advanced stats over here in 2023. Uh, my bash metric graded him at 127, which is one of the top per offensive performers in the Cubs farm system this year, um, behind the likes of uh, Jefferson Rojas and Owen Casey and Moises Ballesteros, right behind those guys. So very similar looking WRC plus uh, the OPS plus, which kind of varies a little bit less than WRC plus is 116, which is really strong. Those, like I said, those strikeout and walk numbers uh, compared to league average were a little bit below uh, the league average rates. But when you consider everything else, it was a really strong output from Pete Crow Armstrong. Uh, the swing and miss was there a little bit too much. The uh, ground balls were really low. He was getting the ball in the air and in on a line a lot during this 2023 campaign. And that's something that he's done uh, really well. So with that, let's get into the strengths. Peeker Armstrong's strengths are pretty straightforward, right? He is a gold glove caliber center fielder. One of the best, as soon as he is an everyday center fielder in Chicago, he is one of the best defenders um, in all of Major League Baseball. He is arguably the best defensive center fielder in all of minor league baseball. Um, he, because of that skill in the outfield defensively, he right now, like that floor is already pretty, pretty ridiculous. He's already a, a Major League starting caliber player just based on that glove alone. Like that's going to carry value. He's a multi-war player just based off of his, his glove and his base running, right? He's going to steal you quite a bit of bases. He sold 37 in the minor leagues in 2023. Um, that value is there already. Like he's already a, a, a two-war player at least, even if he didn't really do hardly anything with the bat. On the bright side, in 2023, his power continued to progress. It continued to get better and stronger. Um, and that really raises his ceiling as well. This is not a defensive first player who makes a lot of contact and you're hoping he just has a high batting average and can maybe get to double digit home runs. That's not what Pete Crow Armstrong is anymore. He is he is a guy that has raised his ceiling significantly because of that power potential. I mean, we're looking at a, at a, at a 20 plus home run guy. And when you can play gold glove defense in center field, if you can steal 35 bases a year plus at 20 home runs, like that's a very, very valuable player. Um, and so he is no longer that guy that we initially got in a trade for Javi Baez back in, in 20 or back in 20, what, 2021 or whenever that was. Uh, there you go. You can see it up, up above 2021. Uh, he is no longer that player where you're like, oh, man, maybe he's he's Albert Almora like this is not an Albert Almora player. Right. This is plus speed, plus defense, really good pop at the plate, learning how to pull the ball a whole lot better than he was in the past. So. Uh, I really like what we're seeing as far as the floor 
still being there and the ceiling being raised as well. As far as weaknesses go with Pete Crow Armstrong, I mean, it, it's it was pretty evident. You're not taking this line that we see here, this this 19 plate appearance that we see in at the major league level where he did not get a hit. He had an OBP of 176. Like that doesn't mean anything to me. I, I, I've said it on the podcast. I've said it elsewhere. You shouldn't look at what PCA did in Chicago and think any differently than what you thought of him during his time in AAA and AA this year. He is the exact same player. He is exactly who we expected him to be. And we can't get bogged down by going hit list in 19 plate appearances, playing sporadically over the course of a month. That that time in Chicago meant nothing in terms of how we should grade him, how we should rank him, and how we should think of him long term. So um, what we did see from him in a little bit in Chicago, but what we also saw from him during his time in AAA and AA is that it's going to be it's going to be important that he continues to learn how to hit high fastballs or lay off high fastballs. If he wants to lay off high fastballs, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, but in terms of him at the plate, it's high fastballs and it's changeups kind of like dive from right-handed pitchers diving away from him outside of the zone. If he can do those two things and really just, just not even make more contact against those two types of pitches, but just lay off those pitches. One, the, the walk rate will, will continue to be high enough that it needs to be. Um, and we will see that swing and miss uh, rate, that swing and strike rate of 15%. That'll continue to go down too, because that's what he's swinging and missing at the most are the high fastballs and the, the change-ups down and out of the zone. So those are the two weaknesses that I see in Pete Armstrong. And really, like, that's all I'm seeing. If he can, And, and I, I guess I'll, I'll throw one more in there. The base running aggressiveness is very clearly too aggressive at this point. It's what you're going to get with PCA, right? I don't think that he's going to lay off and, and be um, much more relaxed on the base bats. You're getting an aggressive baseball player. You're getting an aggressive base runner. Um, with that, you're also getting a great base runner. So he's going to get thrown out from time to time. You're going to see double digits caught stealings, but he's also a very, very intelligent base runner, aggressive, that really helps you out a lot like what Javi Baez did during his time with the Chicago Cubs. I've kind of hinted at it here as far as potential outcomes go. Um, with Pico Armstrong, the, there's already that floor there, right? The floor is there where he can be an everyday center fielder in Chicago for a long time. Um, that we'll see with other players like the Kevin O'Contras, their own Casey's, the other outfielders, like their potential outcomes are much different, right? They had their, their floor is not even making it to Chicago. Their ceiling is being an, an, all-star caliber caliber player year in and year out. Uh, Peaker Armstrong, it's more of a, a smaller window here, right? Those potential outcomes aren't quite as drastic where he can be an everyday player in the floor. And in the ceiling, I think he can make a couple all-star teams from, from time to time. He's not going to gonna go out there and slash 250, 350, 450 every single year. Um, but that's okay, right? I think that, that having an all-star caliber player who makes the all-star team um, every other year or so is still an incredibly impressive baseball player. And I think that's the peak that you're seeing with him. So again, smaller potential outcomes, but it makes you feel a whole lot more comfortable in ranking him at number one here. Timeline for Peter Armstrong is, I mean, he's already there, right? We've already seen him debut in Chicago last year. Um, I think that going into the 2024 season, I think it'll be really interesting to see how he performs in spring training for 2024. Uh, I think that how he, how hard he works and how much he improves in the off season and how much that is displayed in spring training, whether that's in spring training baseball games that we watch on TV or what he's doing uh, behind the scenes that only the coaches are seeing. All of that is going to contribute to whether or not he's on the opening day roster in Chicago come 2024. I think that I, I would kind of hedge my bets and guess that he will be in AAA to start off the year. And I think that that's okay, right? If he starts off the year in AAA, work on some things, make sure he's good to go. Because once he's in Chicago, like he's going to be an everyday baseball player. I don't think that he gets, he starts the year on the opening day roster um, to be a bench player, to be a defensive replacement. That was that was valuable last year to end the year in a, in a playoff chase to have that that speed and that defense. Uh, you can be you can argue on the way he was used in the year in 2023. That's fine, but he won't start 2024 as that defensive replacement. Either he's on the roster to start every single day, or he's in AAA still starting every single day, working his way up. And I think mid season is probably like the 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 latest that we see PCA in Chicago Manning center field every single day. So. 
Uh, I really like what I've seen from him in 2023. I'm really excited about PCA come 2024 and years years forward. Again, the, the, the Javi Baez trade for PCA is just so interesting considering that, that Javi was PCA's favorite player. Um, and it's really important to remember that that Javi was everybody's favorite player. There was always a joke. I think that, that Joe and Avia's shirts kind of made the, made the joke and made the shirt that Javi Baez is your favorite player's favorite player. Well, that's PCA to a, to a T. PCA is your favorite player's favorite player. You're going to enjoy watching him in Chicago from years to, for years to come. And I can't wait to see what we what we get from him in 2024. So uh, that's all I've got on P on PCA. I hope you enjoyed this pro prospect profile on him. There'll be more of these coming out sometime soon. So be sure to subscribe, like this video if you can. Give me your thoughts in the in the comments on what you think about PCA long term, short term. How excited you are to see him play again. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for following along here at Northside Bound. And uh, you guys all take care.